every questionnaire has biased questions, everyone. And when I say that, I mean I mean the following. After you've asked the first question and gotten an answer, from that point forward, all the all the remaining questions have been shaped, and, so, and the answers to the remaining questions have been shaped a little bit by the response to that first question. And after the second question, the bias grows. And as people go through the questionnaire, they're, they're starting to dig into a position, and sometimes people look to even shape their responses to be consistent with earlier responses. Uh, or they, they feel they said this now, they should say this again, or say something like it again later. So there's so when people say, well, is this questionnaire valid, that, that's not the right way to, to, to answer, ask the question. Is this questionnaire basically well-developed? Is it is it got language that's easy to understand? Uh, are you avoiding blatantly leading questions? That's because you know, there are leading questions you want to avoid. So those are the, those are the, the important things. Again, do, did people understand uh, the, the the idea that that of what you're where you're going? If, if you were uh, hiding the sponsorship, did you hide the sponsor because you think it might bias responses? Did you hide the sponsorship successfully or not? Uh, or, or, or did you fail to hide the sponsorship, and, and, did, and did people suspect who it is, and then give answers based upon that? So these are these are all the things that you need to do on, on slide 20 to try to minimize the, the the bias that's going to exist. There's always going to be a little a bit of bias. Now the best way to keep to minimize bias and all many of these other issues on slide 20 is to keep the questionnaire as short as you can live with. The shorter the questionnaire, the higher the cooperation rate and the higher the quality of the cooperation. In other words, the more time people will spend giving better answers that reflect what they really think, and they won't rush through it. Uh, and that's important. All right, questionnaire decisions. Uh, basically, the order of the questions which we discussed, the presentation of stimulus, uh, key, key thing to, to, to consider, what is a stim what's the stimulus or what will the stimuli look like if, the, if you need that sort of thing? Uh, had, did you spend time on what, and forgive me, I'm going to introduce a, an occasional academic word that is meant to explain the, the issue. Did you do a manipulation check, which basically is an academic word for the stimulus you presented, is that really a valid stimulus? Does it really reflect what you believe the, the actual uh, conditions of the, the world or the universe or the environment will be? And sometimes you can't really do a uh, create a stimulus that's exactly like what will be because you're working on something that's a prototype. Um, in, in the world of electronics, we oftentimes uh, use uh, prototypes and knowing that what people are responding to is not going to be the final product. Uh, and same thing in, in, in finance where we, we do test, test runs of a financial product that is not exactly what the final financial product is going to look like, but we're, we, we can try to come as close to it as we possibly can since, of course, rates and, and terms and conditions in the financial world can, can change over time. Uh, same thing with the, in, 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 the, in the healthcare area in terms of the kinds of uh, uh, promises you can make or can't make due to regulatory constraints. You don't want to promise something in a, in a communication that you know you're never going to be able to say in actuality in, 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 in the operating uh, marketplace or environment. So this, uh, the, the item development is, is uh, oftentimes what we like to do, what, what we rec strongly recommend is to spend a lot of time on that uh, as much as you can. Uh, you go through all the previous research you've already done to see if you've got the items off the shelf. You might need to do some qualitative work, one-on-one -on -one interviews or, or uh, small mini groups or focus groups to develop uh, items that you think might be important for something that that you're, that you're working on. You're going to need to make sure that, again, that uh, to decide on your scale. And there's uh, the, the notion of uh, the, the whole area of scale is a, is a, is a huge one to, that we could spend, again, a, a great deal of time on. But you've got to decide, uh, are you going to use a skewed or, or, or a non-skewed scale? Uh, let me talk, tell you what I, what I mean by that. Typically, scales are balanced. You've got, you know, typical, one of the most famous scales is, a, you know, definitely will buy probably will buy, might or not, might or might not buy, probably will not buy, and definitely will not buy. Yeah. But sometimes uh, it, it doesn't discriminate a, a enough, and, you, and maybe everybody's favorable, and so everybody's going to say probably or definitely. And you, what you want to do is you want to 
put in more positive elements on the positive side to be able to get some separation from those who really feel strongly about it versus those who don't. And so you come up with a positively skewed scale. Overall, overall brand ap- appeal, overall brand appeal is a scale like that where you ask people on an overall basis, what do you think of the brand or what do you think of the company or what do you think of the product? And you, and you use things like excellent, very good, good, fair, and poor. Clearly, clearly, I, I, that, those five points, um, uh, those five points are, are weighted toward the positive, so that way people can give you something positive without necessarily giving you everything in the top two box. And you, it, but the most important thing is to decide whether or not you want to do that or not. Now, open-ended questions. Um, open-ended questions are wonderful, but they take a lot of time. And, and sometimes they're necessary, but they take a lot of time. And, and recording them and analyzing them, first of all, recording them, coding them, and putting them in a, in a, in a specific, in a, in a, in a coded response, getting, being sure that you coded the responses correctly, and then analyzing the codes and, 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 the, uh, and the responses against the quantitative closed-ended questions takes time and expense. And sometimes it doesn't take you any further along than where you were before. So it's best when you do your qualitative work to identify what the potential responses might be to qualitative open-ended questions, and then use that to basically uh, inc- inc- incorporate closed-ended questions into your survey. However, sometimes there's no there's no getting around it. You need an open-ended question, and then so be it. But it does take more time to to do, and it slows things down a bit. Uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite topics is behavioral items. Um, questions that refer to what respondents actually did or plan to do. Uh, I love these kinds of questions. A very famous study I, I was associated with many years ago was uh, the Yellow Pages. And the Yellow Pages used to ask people, tell me all the various all the various um, uh, areas of the, of the Yellow Pages you visited, you know, hardware stores, restaurants, medical, veterinarian, you know, dog grooming, you know, car wash, car automobile mechanic or plumber. Tell me the, tell me the, the headings that you, that you looked at in the last month. And they'd get back responses that varied, uh, and they got back uh, an assessment of how often people used the yellow pages. And then they changed it after, after a point in time to, tell me all the, did you use the yellow pages yesterday? And only among the people that used it yesterday, they were asked, uh, tell me the heading that you used. And they found, when they did that, that the usage went up overall. The, or I should say the projected usage went up. Uh, it went up because people don't have good memories. So if you ask them, tell me what you've done in the last 30 days or so, or if you say, tell me all the trips you've taken or the vacations you've taken, they can hopefully probably still remember that. But something as low involved, low involvement as, as going into the yellow pages, uh, they're not going to remember that. That's why you got. They're going to forget some things that they had that they looked at maybe 25 days ago, and so it's it's important for that reason to ask them what did you do yesterday? What, what did you what did, what did you what did you see yesterday? In many cases, that's a better question than, than the last 30 days ago. It depends upon the nature of you know the the, the topic you're investigating.